The Amazon rainforest's ecosystem may well be the oldest in the world, and it holds a fantastic spectrum of plant and wildlife. The life forms found in the rainforest may be the most diverse on Earth. The rainforest has the most biodiverse ecosystem in the world and holds, for the smallest area, holds the majority of the animal and plant and insect species in the world. So as a, as a living workshop, it's, it's just an incredible place to see the interaction of uh, a very intense uh, ecosystem uh, that is constantly changing. Within the rainforest are 300 different kinds of trees and an incredible array of insects, animals, and birds. This marvelous variety attracts scientists from all over the world. Probably 3,000 species of birds will be in the Amazon basin. That's probably a third of all the birds in the world. In like a 50-mile square area in the rainforest, you can have as many birds as in the entire North America. Much of the biodiversity of the rainforest is due to the levels or layers found there. It's almost as if the rainforest is not one ecosystem, but four. The first level, the tallest, is called the emergent layer, where trees grow to be as large as 200 feet high and 16 feet in diameter. Reaching to the sun, the emergent layer trees of thick, waxy leaves. These leaves hold water, and the trees provide a home to insects, monkeys, eagles, bats, and snakes. At the base of these mammoth trees, the buttress roots fan out instead of going deep because the soil is so poor in nutrients. Below the emergent layer is the canopy, whose trees grow to be 150 feet tall. Their branches form an umbrella that shades the layers below. Sunlight is filtered and blocked by the smooth oval leaves which shed water quickly onto the layers below, earning them the nickname drip tips. The thick woody vines of the canopy form a tangle of vegetation, providing a haven for wildlife. Monkeys, sloths, tree frogs, ants, beetles, parrots, and hummingbirds thrive in the canopy. The trees in the canopy are so thick and fertile that other plants called epiphytes grow and spread from them, collecting pools of rainwater. A tree frog may spend its entire life living in one of these plants. In the shade of the canopy are the plants of the understory layer, which grow up to 12 feet high. These plants, because they receive so little light, have made adaptations to survive. Flowers are strong-smelling, for example, to attract insects and draw them downwards. Frogs, snakes, parakeets, leopards, jaguars, and many, many species of insects are found in the understory layer. Finally, deep, deep down in the rainforest is the forest floor. It is dark there as the layers above have blocked much of the sunlight. Humidity is high and plant life is sparse. Things decay quickly in this environment and provide the only nutrients found in the soil. Nevertheless, insects such as termites, cockroaches, beetles, centipedes, scorpions, and earthworms are abundant on the forest floor. Despite the robust life found in the Amazon rainforest, like all ecosystems, it is fragile. Disruption to one layer has an effect on all of the others in a chain reaction. The top parts of the canopy and the emergent growth zones in the rainforest have just an incredible abundance of life and even within those areas little tiny uh, micro environments exist whereas one branch might have uh, an area of a pool on it where insects and some reptiles will live their entire life. Often you see this vastness of the rainforest but they don't travel that much so there's types of primates that may live their entire life and generations on one tree so within a very small confined area you can just see uh, many different types of um, environments and many types of animals and plants that coexist without really ever uh, stepping on each other. 
The topsoil of the rainforest is very thin and poor in nutrients. Tribal natives who live in extreme poverty may turn to farming and ranching in order to raise cash crops. They burn the trees to enrich the soil, but after several years of planting, the nutrients created by this burning will be used up. The land will become bare and the topsoil blown away by tropical winds. Deforestation in particular is just uh, catastrophic. Uh, this is an extremely old ecosystem and really it's a fairly fragile one. The rainforest is good for a rainforest. It's not good for other things. The soil is not good soil. The types of trees and plants have developed to utilize this poor soil and actually kind of making their, their own uh, nutrients uh, in ways that we're not accustomed to. So when you clear that down for crops, they don't work. Crops are, are just don't survive there. But then you can't regrow the rainforest. Uh, old rainforest is what is required for most of these uh, animals to survive. New growth, a lot of the species just will not be able to utilize it. So once it's gone, it's gone. Because of the disruption to the delicate eco-balance in the rainforest, it is estimated that an average of 35 species become extinct every day. The products that they eat, the plants they eat, then as they move to their other trees, they're passing the seeds and the trees grow. Well, if you take away this species of birds, you might not be able to spread uh, the seeds and this particular type of tree will then die. Well, then the, the insects, the monkeys that live in these will die. Each individual tree in the canopy is incredible. There was a study where they just investigated one tree. They found over 100,000 insects on that one tree, which represented 1,700 species of insects. Over 80% of them were yet to be identified. This is in one tree, so everything is intertwined. And if you take out one link where you might think that you're only uh, causing a problem with that one bird, you may be causing a problem with 50 different species. Life in the Amazon rainforest is interdependent. The connection between species of plants and animals and people is easily disturbed. If the links of the food chain are broken, the effects are widespread and in most cases, irreversible.